Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Pangolin Advisor here with a short tutorial for the Hisho, which are a new faction added to the Endless Space 2 Supremacy expansion, which will be released this Thursday. So let's talk a little bit about them. This tutorial is meant to explain this faction's affinity and their faction traits, and do, and I will also use it to explain how I believe the Hisho should be played in order to maximize their effectiveness. I will not, however, be covering the Hisho specific ships because this is a rather broad topic and subject, and I want this video to be concise. I'll make another video at a later point in time talking exclusively about the Hisho ships. And the Behemoths will get their own video as well, since they are also added in this expansion. So let's begin by talking a little bit about the Hisho. The Hisho are a bear like race engineered by the Endless for their own entertainment. They are all in fact gladiators and they value martial prowess and honor in almost uh, equal values, except they prefer probably killing to killing honorably, but I guess both are important for them. So, of course, they start with their personal uh, unique affinity, that being honor bound, which allows them to accumulate key, and by the way, I do apologize if I cannot pronounce this word correctly, it used to be called honor, back in the day, but now it's just key. Anywho, they use key, and the key is basically granted to them for winning battles and through some other uh, rather rare circumstances, but it's mostly accumulated for winning battles. And uh, it's lost in a variety of ways, you can also spend it on a variety of things. And most importantly, it's also what determines your Empire approval. Once I load the game, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but suffice to say, this is the ability that makes Hisho into extraordinarily powerful warmongers, because it not only fuels their uh, war economy, but also it fuels their guns, almost literally. Additionally, they also start with a behemoth, and behemoths are a thing that is rather difficult to unlock. You first have to do a quest and a reset, and only then you can start making those. He should just have one from the get go. Additionally, he shows a popula uh, population is relatively useful, giving you extra industry production, good for not only making those ships you need to destroy your enemies, but also for fueling your economy, which is also nice. They also increase your military reserves of soldiers, which is rather important since you will be conquering a lot of planets as the Hisho. So keep in mind the strengths of the Hisho. So far everything seems to be military oriented, so let's go ahead and continue going. And uh, talk about the setting situation, that being the fact that they are a dictatorship. Uh, usually I'm not a big fan of dictatorship and I often change governments, but the, for the Hisho it is an acceptable system, because for the most part you're probably going to stay militaristic and sometimes maybe religious anyway, and you don't really need to have any other effects. Also, senator skills for the Hisho are rather powerful, so increasing their power is something that's certainly desirable. You also start with Isle Citizens, which increase your influence, which is always a useful resource to have an excess of, because it lets you negotiate with other factions, as well as perform a variety of useful uh, actions that are, well, difficult to categorize, I suppose. You also have a Sacred Tradition. This is something I'll again go into game and explain it in a little bit more detail, however suffice to say that this allows you to sacrifice a unit of your own population in order to gain some kind of effect. Uh, additionally, uh, sorry, that is the wrong thing. That I was talking about observances. I did not actually read what I was hovering over. My bad. Secret edition is an entirely different thing, which means that you do not, your government system doesn't change when you are in rebellion, as you can clearly see. And additionally, you can also see the path, flight paths of uh, fleets of enemy empires. This sounds extraordinarily useful. In my experience, it was less than that, but it's still nice to know where the enemy ships are going. I have used this on occasion or two. Resource recoveries is a thing specific to the Behemoth class ships. Again, I'll talk a bit more about Behemoths in the future, but I'll just give you a short recap. Behemoths can carry mining probes, which allow them to recover resources, strategic resources and luxury ones uh, from other planets, even planets that are not controlled by you. Hisho are even better because uh, their mining probes also allow them to get some footsie, that being the resources for the industry dust science, from those planets in addition to the strategic resources. Also, Hisho will never talk with the pirates and they will uh, gain more 
st uh, resources when they kill pirates, although the latter is probably not so important. In fact, not being able to talk with the pirates is a relatively big handicap, but hey, it is a fun mechanic nevertheless, and it gives you even less excuses to fight them, although as the history you always want to fight pirates just to gain more key. You can also gain more behemoths on your empire than other factions, which is always useful if you, especially if you are a player who enjoys using those giant hokey bulky machines in order to fuel your economy or destroy your enemies. You also start with two technologies, one being the Xeno Linguistics and the Rare Air Forms, and that's good enough for now. Let us go ahead and continue by loading into a game and discussing briefly what the Hisha are all about and giving you more detailed explanations of uh, what the threats do and what they are used for and uh, how you can see what, uh, how you can interact with them to be more precise. So we're probably going to start with Key and uh, as I said earlier, Key is almost never end in any different way than uh, winning a battle. There are a few ways around this, for instance there are quests that reward you with Key after you finish them. Uh, certain wonders give you an income of key for a limited amount of turns once you complete them. And uh, occasionally you can also gain key in some other ways, but generally this is a rather difficult resource to obtain and as such you have to be careful of what you can do with it. And there are a lot of things you can do with it. Firstly, make sure that you do not drain it by accident, because key can be lost if you, for instance, order your fleet to retreat. The Hisho do not retreat, they are beyond such frivolities, they prefer to face their enemies head on. And, well that's embarrassing, I was going to show something for the video, but I guess the Hisho, uh, the Horatio decided to capture my system. Not a big problem, I'm just going to kill all of the Horatio as, my, as a punishment for this insult, but for the time being, this is a tutorial and it's been a fairly long one at that, so let's focus. Key, first of all, can power your honorable actions, which are displayed over here. There are four honorable actions to choose from, and you can only choose one in particular at any given time. They last for five turns. One of them is uh, generally used as a defensive action, and you need very little kit in order to activate it. The other, uh, in fact, you need no kit to activate it, my bad. The other makes your fleet appear more powerful, but it also makes it a little bit more mobile, which is certainly useful. Another is good for increasing your empire economic, uh, your sister's economic power. And finally, we've got the Order of the Red Blade, which just makes your ships extraordinarily powerful in combat. Now, what is important to note that these effects that are displayed, there are two different f effects displayed, if you notice that, on Fleet and on Behemoth's Key Zone. These are not simultaneous. You can either choose to activate an empire, uh, an honorable deed on a specific thing, for instance the star system, or you can choose to activate one of those things on a behemoth instead, in which case uh, in which case, the other effect will be applied. So for instance if I have a behemoth that is around all my systems, I would probably rather apply a, a key effect to set behemoth. And as you can see now it works on a variety of systems, which is extraordinarily useful. So this is going to boost my systems into production. And this did cost me key, and as I said, key is a rather important thing that you need to save up. Because other than that, there are some improvements that require key in order to be implemented. For instance, the Fuity Foundation is an extraordinarily powerful planetary specialization. However, it has an enormous key cost associated with it. So you can only do it a little bit at a time, in all, and for that reason you need to really stock power key and make sure you don't use it too. Uh, too quickly on some trivial matters. More importantly, and this is the most important critical feature for the Hisho Empire, key is used as your system uh, system approval of sorts. Key determines how much your people are obedient to you. For instance, right now my people are only dutiful because I just cre used my honorable action and spent my five uh, key on that, lowering my key amount and making them only dutiful, uh, which provides me with no bonuses whatsoever. The bonuses or penalties you get from Empire Obedience are the same as if it was with the uh, approval section. However, the important thing is, unlike with approval, your obedience doesn't change regardless of the amount of systems you have. As you can see, you have a, quite a few systems. All of them have the exact same obedience level. 
meaning that neither of them have any penalty or approval at this point in time because I'm at 62%. I can conquer the entire galaxy and not suffer a single penalty to my obedience. This makes the Hishu the absolute best faction for obtaining the conquest victory type because they are the only ones that can completely ignore the penalty for having too many systems under their control. This is incredible and this places them firmly in the warmonger category. In fact, if you try to play them peacefully, you're probably missing out on the best uh, what the Hisho have to offer. Of course, the Hisho are also very good as the supremacy victory for similar reasons, but I do want to highlight Conquest because there are so very few factors that could even afford to think about Conquest victory and the Hisho are certainly unique in that regard. Moreover, because they do not use approval, a lot of their laws and abilities that usually interact with approval are replaced. For instance, if you see the Holiday Act, it has nothing to do with approval, instead it increases your key bonuses after battle. Other laws, they require you to actually spend key pattern in order to upkeep them, which makes them way less uh, preferable than usual. Although Hatchet Home is a unique one which has extraordinarily good benefits and also can be its cost can be minimized somewhat with a unique uh, uh, improvement that the Hishu have access to called Ancestral Revenant, Revenants or whatever you call it. Where the pulse is that? Ancestral thingy. Oh, there it is. Which, as you can see, allows you to ship your food and your industry into your home system, which is extraordinarily useful in certain circumstances. Now, let's talk a little bit more about observances. As you can see right now, I have the Sun God's Ritual available to me. This is one of the observances, one of the free observances, observances that the he should have access to. And as I said, you sacrifice the unit of your population and you gain a certain benefit. The absolute best population in my uh, observance, in my opinion, is the observance that allows you to convert one population into five key, which you can see in the next observance tab is going to be my next observance. Observances change with every election, so depending on your game speed, on no models will be 20 tenths, on fastest will be 10 tenths, and so on and so forth. In regards to key, there's pretty much everything I needed to mention. Sorry, with the exception that there are also key zones provided by your behemoths. And when you... <coughs> I'm terribly sorry. And when your behemoths fight in these uh, key zones, they provide a percentage bonus to the key gained after battle. So, if we're going to have a look at this battle, and we're not going to watch this, we don't have the time for that, and we're just going to engage and see how we come out, if we come out on top or if we do not, we're going to see the result in measured in key most likely. So let's have a quick look at the boss battle results. The enemy behemoth has been destroyed. I gained 3.3 key, partially because of the uh, percentage bonus uh, modifier from my key radius. Additionally, other things to be included are the amount of control points to destroy for the enemy ships, that also determines it, and very importantly, the strength difference on the fire. Basically, the stronger the enemy fleet is relative to yours, the more key you gain. So for an easy battle, you're probably going to gain very little key. For a very difficult battle, if you win it, you're going to gain a lot of key. Especially if you injure the enemy hero. So this is a very important thing, and because I completed a quest, as you are going to see, I just... Uh, wait, that's a new quest, sorry. I just gained extra 5 key and also, of course, other quest rewards as usual. This is very important. Also, another thing, a new thing in this expansion, added the debris field, but this tutorial is not about that, it's about the Hisho. So let's move on to our next thing to talk about, which is... Hmm. I believe I talked about everything except for one more thing, which is very, very important, and that being the expansion. So, the Hisho expand as everybody else by using their brute ships, which uh, look like so. They are very useful ships, you can actually have two engines installed with them simultaneously and a colonization module, which makes them extraordinarily speedy, which is good, always useful to have. But the important thing is, once you colonize a system, it will never become a full-fledged colony on its own. Instead, the system only turns into a colony once you spend a key on it, and the key cost changes depending on how long you spend colonizing the system. So the key, uh, so the key show have a very slow growth for their outposts, and it's severely reduced in comparison to that of other factions, and they have less outpost actions as well. And in order to turn their outpost into a colony right away, they need to spend 
on like dozens and dozens of key. But even at its cheapest, you need to spend at least 10 key in order to turn an outpost into a colony. This means that the Hisho are awful colonizers and instead prefer to take their systems from the enemy factions, which is going to be much easier for them. It will not cost them key, quite the opposite, it is going to give them key. And finally, while well, this brings you a step closer to your military victory conditions with every system that you take. And this is, in my opinion, the best path to play the best path to follow when you play as the Hisho. Conquer the enemy systems as much as possible, try to limit your own expansions because you will need to spend valuable key on expanding, although sometimes when a system is just too good to pass, feel free to colonize it, I suppose. But conquering is the way to go and it is how you are to win your game. If you are struggling to gain your key or maintain your key in early game, keep in mind that you can fight the pirates and fighting the pirates is going to net you a big amount of key, although the pirates are usually a bigger threat than a major faction for the very simple reason that pirates, especially on endless difficulty, have very modern ships, whereas enemy faction can be caught off guard and destroyed without even being prepared for your arrival. Are there any additional tips? Well, let's talk a little bit about the Hisho heroes. And uh, they are obviously predetermined to be very good commanders. They have a bunch of abilities that allow you to increase the effectiveness of your fleets. You also start with you also start with a guardian, which is very <laughs> which very clearly points towards being a warmonger. And very importantly, a Hisho uh, Senate leader can also increase the limit of behemoth ships on your empire, which I cannot overestimate how useful that is because usually you need to research a several, well, a few behemoth technologies in order to be able to make a new behemoth. So that is it. I do believe I have discussed everything I needed to in regards to Hisho. Overall, a very powerful military faction. I will, I cannot wait to make playthroughs over them and of course stream them today at 5 p.m. CST, although if you watch this uh, video uh, even a day later after it's published, then, well, too late, you can watch the VOD of the stream, I suppose. There are, of course, ways to be peaceful as the Hishu. You can still send peace treaties and alliances, but you do need to have enemies to gain your key from, and keep in mind that your ultimate goal is most likely going to be a military one, so make sure you never run out of targets, and you should be good to go, and your empire is going to be tremendously powerful as a result, because keep in mind, no matter how many plans you have, if you have enough key, they're all going to have extra bonus food production and uh, other types of production just because you fight with honor. So keep that in mind, thank you for watching, and I'll see you online.